my name is Janelle and welcome to Castle and Coal Kitchen. Castle and Coal is located in Toronto, Canada and we are a small shop that does French and British pastries and desserts. So Castle and Coal all came to be when I was living and working in North Yorkshire, England. I tried some desserts that I've never really had before, such as the sticky toffee pudding, lemon posset, scones, and one of my favorites, clotted cream ice cream. When I went down south to central London, I started working in a Michelin star restaurant that did custard tarts, and I realized how much I love custard. Our Queen's custard is very time consuming. It's not as easy as you might think. It takes five hours for ours to Make, and it's due to mostly letting it rest. A good tart needs to have a good base and it has to be made and rolled out properly to avoid any cracks and leakage once it's in the oven. So we have our Robo Group. We actually keep ours in the fridge for at least an hour just so when we do mix it, our dough stays nice and chilled. So we have our flour, our sugar, our lemon zest, and a little bit of salt. And on this guy, we have yolks and our whole eggs. Oh, we, and we also have butter in here as well. So we just wanna put our dry ingredients. So we're just gonna let this blitz for maybe two minutes. So this has been blitzing for less than a minute. The texture looks really nice and crumbly. And when I do press it, it comes together and it's good to go for the eggs. I'm gonna scrape it. So we don't wanna over mix it. As you can see, it's not fully formed. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put it on the counter and we're gonna knead it a little bit. So we're gonna add a little bit of flour onto the counter, knead it until it's nice and combined. And now that it's all combined, we're gonna portion them into little discs and we're gonna let them chill for three hours. This dough has been chilled for three hours. Now we're gonna roll it out and line our tart mold. So for this sweet paste, I actually put a lot of flour and I knead it for quite some time. And I'm looking for that texture where it's not too crumbly and it's kind of not rubbery, but you know that the gluten has formed. So even though I'm kneading this for quite some time, one of our main goals is not to heat it up. So when we're rolling it, we wanna keep our dough cold or else you'll start to notice that it'll start to split. So we wanna roll it out nice and even and obviously not let the dough stick onto the counter. So we're rotating it every few rolls. So for the tar, we actually roll it quite thin. And then when I think it's nice and large enough, we check it, double check it. So our dough is still cold. We haven't been playing around with it too much and we wanna keep it that way. So we have our half sheet tray, parchment paper that's cut out and we have our tart mold. Line it on the counter. And this is the most important part. So you want no cracks while you're rolling it out. And you want the tart dough nice and sharp. So then we transfer the dough onto the half sheet tray. And you kind of want excess dough hanging just because you can fill in the tart more and it doesn't shrink when you do bake it. It's pretty nice and smooth. We have sharp edges. What we're gonna do now is trim some dough and I will explain why. And we wanna take this excess dough 
And we're just gonna press in the corners for sharper edges. So we're not gonna throw this out. We're actually gonna keep this. And now we're going to line it. What we use in, a shop, in our shop is um, cling film and rice. Since we have a rationale oven, it doesn't really melt or smoke and it does give sharper edges when you blind bake it. So we usually do this the night before. This dough has been chilled overnight and it's ready to be put in the oven to blind bake. Now what we're gonna do is make the custard. We make the custard fresh and we wanna keep it warm when we put it in our tart. It does bake faster. It does have a smoother texture in the end. What I'm doing right now is boiling my cream. I have my yolks and I have my sugar. I'm just gonna whisk the sugar in. You want it nice and smooth. Once it comes to a boil, turn that off. Gonna whisk. And then we are going to strain the custard. Do a chinois. And then our next step is to actually torch the top to get rid of any excess bubbles. While we're waiting for the tart to finish blind baking, we're just gonna grate some fresh nutmeg so it's ready to be put on when the custard is in the tart. We never use already ground nutmeg because fresh nutmeg does have a stronger flavor and smell. Once the tart is golden all the way through, we can start finish assembling it. We finish everything in the oven. It's less of a mess that way. So first we check if there are any cracks in our tart. And if there are, we're gonna use the extra dough that we kept just to patch it up. Once we patch up all the cracks, we can start coating the shell with our egg yolks. Not too much, but we want to make sure everything, especially the cracks, are all covered up. Once that's finished, we are going to take our custard and with a blowtorch, just torch the top again to get rid of any bubbles and we can pour in. We're going to torch the top again and start dusting fresh nutmeg. Once that's finished, we close the oven door and we hope it'll stay as one until the end. So this is how our queen's custard looks like once it's been baked and rested for a few hours. What we're going to do now is we're gonna take a microplane. We're gonna go around the edges and just trim off the excess dough that's been hanging. So if you see really closely, it's still jiggling and that's what we wanna see. So now that the edges have come off, we're gonna take the mold out and we're ready to cut. So you need a sharp knife, low torch, and a wet towel. So we're gonna torch the knife. We want it really hot. I'm gonna make our first cut. And then we're gonna give it a good wipe. And then we're gonna do our second cut. Slowly pull it. And should have that jiggle. Yay! And it's good to eat. <laughs> so this is how we make our Queen's Custard at Castle and Coal. You see that it has a really nice jiggle, and if it doesn't have a jiggle, it usually determines that it's a little bit overcooked. So this one turned out perfectly. Next time on Castle and Cole Kitchen, we'll be making some cantaloupe. So thanks for watching.